Hi, so this lecture will uh, try to be as short as possible and it comes after being asked, hey, why does the initRD statement or loading initRAMFS, uh, why exactly does it lead to the conclusion that once we have init started, it doesn't really matter if we just have a busy box in it or um, something more complex or an Android in it or a switch root to something else. So what I'm going to do now in this particular video is to cover uh, what happens until this guy is opened. We already covered it four years ago. It's in my YouTube channel and there were a couple of lectures about linker scripts and about debugging early x86 code. There was also a code about debugging and understanding the boot flow of a ARM64 um, architecture. And this was somewhere around 2020 when, uh, when the embedded Israel meetups stopped being face-to-face uh, -face due to COVID-19. So what I'm going to cover uh, in the first part is a little bit of refresher of things that we already demonstrated. That is like, a, okay, what happens until uh, the kernel starts? But we're just going to cover on something very, very, very specific, which is loading the, the microcodes. And this is for Intel or AMD processors. And in the second part, when we will extract this file and we will look at what may unmake initramfs does and, and this will answer automatically i mean the first part will answer automatically some questions that are usually asked later that are hey what are these early or early two folders how do they come into part so in this first part we're going to talk about the early folders which are the microcode loading so to keep it short, I'm just going to show you the references, okay? And just to keep the context, like this is something that I'm booting right now, okay? Uh, it will have this command line. And this fellow will not run directly like from init. This will not be the, like the very first rootfs because there is an init from fs that is this guy, okay? Just to be honest here, let's do prac cat command line and it's going to be the same one, okay? So I already prepared the files that I want to show. So let's have a look at those. So these are a list of files. I'm leaving it for a second. So for a couple of seconds, perhaps, so that you can have a look and a quick refresher. The linker script. It will have, if we have a 64-bit architecture, it will it will say that we start running from startup 64, okay? So that's exactly what we're going to show right now, which is the second one. We're going to have startup 64 will be in head64.s. And here we will be expecting, we can see that this is the function startup64. And one of the things it will have is architecture specific start kernel code. This would be the initial code and we will see that there will be a branch into it. So let's see, initial code. So there it is, okay. All right. So, um, what we're going to do now is um, so this will be after the secondary end. And sorry, after secondary startup, which means like a hey, starting up secondary um, CPUs. So, this nice fellow is going to be in here, in head64.c, okay? And one of the 
thing that will happen here would be um, load uCode BSP. That's the macro code. Okay. I'm not going to cover the entire flow. Okay. I just want to show you some some files that you can later like relate to. So the code from there will come from um, this guy from microcode uh, kernel arc x86 kernel CPU microcode core.c. And if we look at this, this is something that I already looked for. Load uh, micro. Sorry. Uh, So sorry, it's U code. So load U code BSP. So if we look at this one, then we can see that like uh, it can identify, of course, which is the architecture that we want to load, and then it would code a specific code that will be respectively under either the Intel code or the AMD code. So if we look at the AMD one, we will see that load macro code AMD BSP would go ahead and call find blobs in container and the container would be the init RD and CPIO, okay? which we'll call find microcode in initRD. And this one will once again go to the core one. So let's see that. Find microcode in initRD. It's going to go ahead and search for it, okay? I'm not going to cover the function, but you can actually go and search where and how it is, all right? This is the function where it does like the actual search. So this is also being used by the Intel one, but it's wrapped, if I'm not mistaken, a little bit differently. So we have the load code, uh, microcode Intel BSP. And here we have get microcode blob, which is a wrapper around the same function somewhere. Okay, so we have get microcode uh, blob, uh, and we'll have find macro code in interd, which is the same function that we showed. Now, both of them would receive a U-code path. And the first U-code path would be kernel x86 micro code genuine intel.bin. And for the AMD case, it will be AMD authentic. Yeah, authentic AMD.bin. Okay. So this happens early in the kernel boot and the kernel receives an init ram fs and the init ram fs itself since we're looked at it let's say this let's um um see what boot initrd.emg points to and it points to the kernel that I'm running so it's good enough and just for the fun I'm going to do unmake init ram fs slash uh, to this file, boot initrd.image and the other parameter that it receives would be, um, let's say, temp foobar. And let's make it verbose. So in the video, you can see the file list. And I'll explain what unmake init from fest does later, and we'll see what the init script does later. Later is in another video. So let's have a look at that. It extracts quite a few things, okay? User lib model sounds about right, right? Because the init runfest will have some early models. It will have user bin, it will have all kind of firmware, okay? And it will have files that should look familiar from what we just saw. That are this one and this one okay so when we look at the file extraction itself it will look a little bit different because this will go into one folder this will go into another folder and everything that you actually expect to have like in an init ramfest will be on another folder and in the next video we're going to cover a little bit 
the why and the how. So if we go to temp foobar, you will see that indeed we have three folders. One is under early, another one is under early two. And under main, we will have all kinds of things, including a busy box based in it. This has been a sage and it here it will be bin sh it will have 99 links which means it's busy box okay and i also know that it's busy box which means that it's busy box so if we look at this one it looks exactly the same and it is the same it's the same i know there's no I'm, <laughs> there is no doubt about it, but uh, I suppose that if you are here, then you already trust me. Okay, so in the next part, I will cover what unmake init ramifest does. And I'll try to make it uh, pretty quick, okay? So let's just prove you that it's a shell script. Um, and there you have it, okay? So that will be for the next part. And thank you for watching.